Today's lesson is entitled, Chosen Vessel. In the 11 summers I worked at the Yellowstone Bible Camp, I had the opportunity to meet many preachers, Bible teachers, and elders. One of the best preachers I, I met was Guy Arbison, Jr. Guy is the preacher at Durango, Colorado. He preached at the camp for a week, two or three t times during those summers. And I had the, I also heard him preach one December in, at the Yellowstone Bible Retreat at, in West Yellowstone, Montana for four days. He also wrote a, um, a monthly article for the Rocky Mountain Christian paper and even later became the editor of the Rocky Mountain Christian paper. When Gal was just writing for, uh, articles for the, the Rocky Mountain Christian, his articles were, his little corner you might say, was entitled in earthly vessels. And he ended the article with the statement, within the earthly vessel. So, just what, what was God referring to in these articles? <clears throat> in the Greek Bible, the word, and I'll not try to pronounce it, I'll spell it, <laughs> S-K-E-U-O-S is most often translated vessel, but sometimes is translated instrument, container, jar, object, goods, or property, depending on the context of what you're reading. For example, in Acts 9, 15 and 16, the Lord is speaking to Ananias and sending him to Saul that he might lay his hands on him to restore his sight and to baptize him in Christ. But Ananias was reluctant to go speak to this great persecutor of the church. And so the Lord commanded in Acts 9 and 15, 16, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel, for I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. Look at the word instrument. Here, that, it, that word is, is most often translated vessel. But the New American Standard Bible translators referred instruments. Since Paul was going to bear and to carry the name of Christ. Yeah, vessel may be a better translation. A vessel is a container in which something is placed. Here it is the name of Christ that is being placed in Saul, the container. The name of a person is really that person's revelation. Names identify us and distinguish people from one another. If you were in a group of people and my name came up in the conversation, your mind would think of some aspect of me. If you know me, perhaps my appearance would even enter your mind. 
are some characteristics or some deed, whether good or bad, that you associated with me. In like manner, the name of Jesus reveals who he is. And this revelation is what Saul would be carrying to the Gentiles, to the Jews, and even to kings. And he would play, pay dearly for that. For many people did not want this man to reveal Christ to the world. The persecutor became the persecuted. You later, this former persecutor, that is the Paul, the Apostle Paul, would write of the difficulties he experienced and what the Lord had chosen for him. He tells the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 through 9, 9, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels so that the sur surpassing greatness of the power will be of God and not from ourselves. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Here he reports on what has happened to him since he became a chosen vessel and it has not been easy. Yet, in spite of it all, he never gave up. Paul was not a man to be discouraged about the troubles that came his way. After all, God chose him to be a vessel to carry about his name. The imagery of being a vessel has uh, been encouraging to me for several reasons. First, to see oneself as a container is humbling. The importance of a vessel is not in the vessel itself, but what's placed in it. As a Christian vessel, I realize that it is the, the message I carry that contains the value and the power, not me. Second, to know that I am merely a vessel helps me to deal with the difficulties I face in doing God's will. I have never had to endure as much as Paul, but each of us has its own trials that come with the territory of being a vessel. Whenever I receive gifts I tend to tear through the wrappings, break open the box, and I'm not so interested in the container because I know the true treasure is inside the box or the container. As Christians, we need to be aware and understand that we are only the containers of the true treasure, remembering that the vessel is not as important as what is inside it. We may get ripped apart in this world, 
but no one can harm the treasure we carry. Third, the imagery inspires me to be the best container that I can possibly be. If God can choose Paul to be a chosen vessel, vessel a man who tried to destroy the church, then I can, can, he can use me as well. Like Paul, I also have my baggage. We have all done things that we regret. But the Lord is saying that we can still become a useful container for his name. But Paul encouraged Timothy in this regard when he wrote to him, Timothy in 1 Timothy 1 and 16. Yet, for this reason, I found mercy so that in me as the foremost, God, Jesus Christ, might demonstrate his perfect patience as an example for those who would believe in him for eternal life. Although we regret past mistakes, being chosen by the Lord can help us to put that behind us. It seems to me that if we could envision ourselves as a container like Paul, then we would glorify God in our bodies. So let us try to remember who we are as we carry about the name of Jesus within the earthly vessel. Thank you for being with me this day. Thank you again.